The first time you view a stereo pair of images in 3D, it'll blow you away. So in this video, I wanted to share with you how to view a pair of images like this. And not only that, how easy it is to make them using either one camera, like the phone in your pocket, two cameras if you've got two similar cameras lying around, or even with no cameras at all using software you can download for free on your computer. The concept of stereoscopy is very simple. We've got two eyes and they're about three inches apart. And because of that, the right eye sees a slightly different image to the left eye. So if we can feed those eyes different images, we can trick the brain into believing it's seeing something three-dimensional. And that's how cameras like the Stereo Realist worked. It's got a pair of lenses that take images at the same time and expose them to the film. There are different ways of viewing stereo images. The Victorians had these stereo image viewers that they used with photographs and before photography you could use them with drawings. And I guess this is the modern version of that Victorian viewer. It's called the Owl Viewer made by the London Stereoscopic Company. And you can use the paper stereo pairs in this and even a phone with digital images displayed. And the Stereoscopic Company is run by a guy called Brian May. And yes, that is the Brian May, who was the lead guitarist in Queen. And they've released a bunch of books on the history of stereoscopy. And then there were things like The Viewmaster, Magic Eye Books, and more recently, 3D movies like Avatar and virtual reality headsets. Now, all of these had the same problem. They required equipment, and the effort to use them. And I think that's why after the initial pulse of enthusiasm, the popularity wanes off again. But you can look at stereo pairs of images without using any equipment at all, using the free viewing technique. The idea is to look at two images right next to each other and allow your eyes to overlap them so that a third image appears between the real two that exist. So here's an exercise to help us out with that. There are two green circles and we're going to let our eyes relax and go slightly cross-eyed until they overlap and a third green circle appears in between the two. It might help if you're watching this on a phone to hold it as far away from you as you can and make the image as small as possible. If you're on a computer, you could shrink down the window and that way there's less distance for those circles to travel before they meet in the middle. It'll take a little bit of time and practice but once you get there, you can do that with any stereo pair of images. Just find something clear in each image that you can overlap, and then the picture will snap into 3D, and it'll look amazing. We can make our own 3D image right here in Affinity Designer. You could use Adobe Illustrator or even PowerPoint. In this case, I'm going to move the foreground object over to the left for the right-hand picture because the right hand eye can see around close objects to the ones further away. Now, when you free view this image, the foreground object will look like it's on a different plane. If I add a background object, I need to move that to the left in the left hand image or to the right in the right hand image to make it look like it's behind the front two objects. Once you get this principle, you could draw things by hand to achieve the same effect. There are programs that already have 3D objects in them, and a simple one is Google Earth. We can find somewhere exciting to be, like near Mount Everest, and take two screen grabs, one slightly to the left and one slightly to the right. And those two images make a stereo pair. We can display them together and view them in 3D. If you have computer games where you can press pause and move a free view camera like you can do in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we can do exactly the same thing. For a good 3D image, we need foreground and background elements. In fact, the more layers we have between the foreground and the background, the better. In this image, we've got the aircraft, some buildings, the London Eye. We can change some of the settings to make it look a little bit better. But the key thing here is again, to move the camera slightly to the left or the right for each image and take screenshots that we can view together as a stereo pair. Taking it one step further, in a game where there are replays available with a free view camera, like in Assetto Corsa Competizione, you can move the camera between takes 
This is great because you can take a stereo pair in video and you can relive your entire race in 3D. To make sure the two videos play at exactly the same time because you need each frame to match on the left side and the right side, I looked for something that changed abruptly in the video. In this case, a brake light coming on on the back of the car. I align those frames on both videos and then they run matched perfectly. Even with a single camera like your phone, you can take a stereo pair of images. It's a case of taking one image and then another, moving the phone a couple of inches between the shots. All you need to do is shift the weight from one foot to the other and that's about enough. Remember, the closer something is, the less movement you need to make. The further away something is, like buildings or a massive landscape, you might need a significant distance between the shots to get the right stereo effect. It's fantastic for still lifes where nothing's moving between each shot because there's a delay between the first shot you take and the second. If something moves between the two shots, it's just not gonna work. I've used this technique during portrait sessions and you can get the sitter to remain really still, but their eyes will tend to follow you between the shots. So you've got to get them to focus on one object in the room and you can take the two shots without them following you around. We'll never be able to capture motion with the single camera technique because you need the images to be identical between shots. To get motion, you need to take two pictures at the same time. You can do that on cameras like the Stereo Realist because they have two dedicated lenses that go off when the shutter button's pressed. There are some digital versions of this, I think made by Fuji, but I've never used one. Another option would be to use two cameras with the same focal length lens. I don't have two identical cameras and two identical lenses. The closest I've got is a zoom lens that can go to 85 millimeters and an 85 millimeter prime. My cameras don't exactly match. One's a 5D Mark IV, one's a Canon 6D Mark II. They're both full frame cameras, but they've got different megapixel counts, but the effect works pretty well, as you can see. One solution would be to borrow a camera and lens from a buddy who's got the same equipment as you, or perhaps you have identical equipment as a backup, and that would work even better. To make sure that images are taken at exactly the same time, I'm using a cable release, but I can't attach two cable releases into the remote. To make it work, I had to pick up a two and a half jack Y adapter that both of my cables could go into and plug into the single port in the remote. If there's any motion in the images, both cameras usually take the same image at the same time. There were occasions that I noticed that they were slightly off, and if they're off, you can't use them as a stereo pair though they might make good images on their own regardless. To make things easier in post-production later on, I need to make sure that the clock on both the cameras are set to exactly the same time, either by using the GPS signal or doing it manually. But that way, when I put them in Lightroom and I arrange them by time taken, the pairs of images always show up together, even though they were taken on two different cameras. I'm using two large DSLRs that I can only get so close together. So as opposed to the three inches that my eyes are apart for the stereo view, these cameras are about six inches apart. I need to avoid things that are really close to the camera because the 3D effect won't work. The lenses are just too far apart. But for distances towards the back of the studio, and even further if you were doing landscapes, this would work absolutely fine. In this session, we made some pretty static shots, some shots with motion and video as well. All of those I've interspersed through this video so you can see how well it works for yourself. There are a couple of pitfalls to avoid. Number one, not having a foreground and a background. If there was something plain behind me here, we wouldn't have the 3D effect. You want as much going on in depth as possible to get the best 3D images. With the single camera technique, one problem is having the camera tilted between shots. That makes it hard for your eyes to overlap when you're free viewing or even in the viewer, it won't work quite as well. And of course, if something moves between the shots, your eye can't resolve that and the 3D effect won't work. Whether you've got film scans from a stereo realist or digital pictures from your single camera or double camera technique, we're gonna have to stitch them together in a way you can view them 
on a screen or in print. The easiest way to do this would be in PowerPoint or the Libre Office equivalent of PowerPoint. Simply paste the pictures onto a slide, crop them so that they're either square or in portrait orientation. Remember, the wider they are, the harder it is for your eyes to overlap them. So it's nice to have them as close together as possible. And you can save out from there as a JPEG. If you wanna be old school so you can view your images in a Victorian viewer, you can print something the size of an old stereo pair. They're about seven inches wide, three and a half inches tall, and each image is a three by three inch picture with no gap in the middle. We can make a Lightroom print preset using that page size of seven inches by three and a half inches and image frames of three inches by three inches are butted together. Once you have the template, you can drag and drop your images into the frames. And it's worth free viewing the images to make sure they work in 3D. If you get them the wrong way around, the 3D effect won't work, but you can drag and drop so that they are the right way around. You can save as a JPEG, or you can send it to the printer. On an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper, I can fit three stereo pairs, one on top of the other. A few minutes later, they're printed out and ready to view. If you've got any questions about viewing or making stereo images, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to discuss that with you. And if you've made your own, feel free to leave a link down there so we can go check them out.